No one sent me a brief clipping of some fellow. I don't know him. He called himself an apostle, I believe, somewhere down in Charlotte. Hmm. Never met the fellow. He said, I stole his gospel. What? I previously made a video of so-called Apostle Elsie Mathis accusing Geno Jennings of stealing his gospel. The thief name is Geno Jennings. However, he's now saying he never said that. I never said Geno stole from me. Not one time. They make a clip with my face saying I said Geno stole my gospel. I said he's trying to steal. Right. That's right. That's what I said. I said he was trying to steal yeah. and I wasn't going to let him. I said Geno Jennings stole from Johnson. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. In the video, I also stated that if Mathis is a real apostle sent by Jesus Christ, there shouldn't be fights about who owns the gospel because all the apostles preached the same thing. Upon hearing that, Mathis made another video, stating that Peter and Paul had a gospel, but it wasn't the same thing. He skillfully tried to justify this perspective with Bible. I said Peter had a gospel and Paul had a gospel and it wasn't the same. Amen. 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 Now you come get me. Galatians 2 and 6. What it says. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it make up no matter to me. See, let me tell you something. Gino may seem to be somewhat. Right. Whatever he is, it makes no matter to me. Mm. Why? God accepted no man's person. God don't have a respective person. You may have one, but God does not. Mm. They saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision. That's, that's a gospel there. See what Paul, Pe Paul is saying? When, when they saw, saw the gospel of the uncircumcision uh -huh. was committed unto me. Committed unto Peter. Unto me. To Peter. Unto me. To Peter. Unto me. The gospel of the circumcision. The uncircumcision. Uncircumcision was committed unto me. Right. Paul said. Not to everybody else, but unto me. Right. That's one gospel. Keep going. As the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Hold on. So Peter had a gospel. Yeah. yeah. And Paul had a gospel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Peter had circumcision. Paul had uncircumcision. Right. Johnson had no son of God in heaven. Matthew's got the son of man is. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Mathis is saying Peter and Paul had their own special versions of the gospel. The narrative of Paul preaching to the uncircumcised and Peter to the circumcised does not imply different gospels but rather highlights the universality of the message. The essence of the gospel remains unchanged. Salvation was for the Jews, however, God extended salvation to the Gentiles and appointed Paul to bring the message to them. It's the same gospel preached to two set of people. This reveals the adaptability of the gospel, demonstrating its capacity to resonate with people from various backgrounds. Labeling Peter and Paul as preaching different gospels can lead to unnecessary division within the Christian community. While they have preached the messages to different set of people, the essence of the teachings remains rooted in the same gospel of salvation. Emphasizing that they did not have the same gospel can foster misunderstanding and hinder unity among believers. Pastor Mathis even going so far as saying Jennings preaches a similar message as S.C. Johnson. During a live broadcast, Gino Jennings passionately confronted Mathis, emphatically asserting that he doesn't need to take anyone else's gospel. Jennings energetically said that Mathis's gospel isn't strong enough to bring people to his church, so there's really no reason to steal it. You know folks yell about me to bring viewers. <laughs> I'm convinced. They yell about me on their website mm -hmm. <clears throat> to give them viewers and subscribers. Mm -hmm. No one sent me a brief clipping of some fella. I don't know him. He called himself an apostle, I believe, somewhere down in Charlotte. Mm. Never met the fella. He said, I stole his gospel. What? I listened to about a few minutes of it. Sitting in a building that sounded like only have three people. My Lord, my Lord. And I stole his gospel. My Lord. Listen, if your gospel that weak that it can't bring in souls, I don't want to steal nothing from you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He said, Pastor Jennings got the same gospel that Bishop Johnson had. Wonderful. Wonderful. Because Bishop Johnson had the gospel that God gave him at that time That's for it. that time. That's right. But I didn't have to steal nothing that he preached. No. If God sent him and God sent me, we're supposed to speak, speak the same, the same, same thing, thing, same thing. That from the same book. That's right. Huh? That's right. 
We're supposed to have the same thing. Same thing. God, give me a revelation about something. It can't contradict God's word. That's right. Or else I can't say I got it from God. That's right. Hey, man, I don't want no gospel. I don't have to steal nothing from some fella that I have about three people. <laughs> his wife, his son, and his grandson. My Lord, my Lord. I don't want that. No. The no way. stuff that God gave me came from heaven. That's it. That's why it's pulling souls by the thousands from every country in the world. That's right. Geno Jennings confidently declares that S.C. Johnson was sent by God to the people in his time. He sees a connection between what he's doing now and the divine task that Johnson carried out in the past. This assertion adds a layer of significance to Jennings' preaching, as he draws confidence in knowing that both he and Johnson were sent by God for a specific purpose. Pastor Mathis' accusation against Geno Jennings for allegedly stealing his gospel has stirred controversy on social media. Many agree with Geno Jennings, suggesting that Mathis may be using Jennings' name merely to gain attention, emphasizing the negative impact of seeking popularity through such tactics. This approach not only detracts from the core message of faith but also risks damaging the integrity of religious leaders by turning their teachings into a platform for personal recognition. In the pursuit of genuine spiritual guidance, it is essential to prioritize the essence of the message over personal agendas, steering clear of sensationalism that can tarnish the reputation of those involved. Furthermore, when Pastor Mathis engage in public disputes solely for attention, it diverts focus from the underlying principles of faith and morality. Persons may become disillusioned as the teachings appear overshadowed by the spectacle of personal feuds. Such controversies can erode the trust and respect that individuals should have for the Church, undermining the very importance and foundation of what the Church should be. Moreover, the quest for popularity can foster an environment of competition, breeding discord within the larger religious community. This not only contradicts the principles of humility and unity but also sets a detrimental example for believers, potentially sowing seeds of division and animosity. In the age of media scrutiny, the negative consequences of seeking popularity become magnified, as public disputes can quickly spread through various channels, creating a distorted image of faith communities. The focus on individual fame risks overshadowing the collective efforts to spread positive messages and engage in meaningful dialogue. Ultimately, the pursuit of getting attention from another platform for personal gain in religious context not only undermines the authenticity of the spiritual message but also jeopardizes the cohesion and credibility of the entire faith community. Pastor Mathis does not embody the essence of a genuine apostle, he lacks the divine commission from God. A true apostle would refrain from engaging in conflicts with another for preaching the same thing. If Mathis was truly sent by God, his calling would be characterized by a harmonious coexistence with fellow apostles of the truth, fostering unity and collaboration in the service of a higher purpose. In the face of differences or disagreements, a genuine apostle endeavors to find resolutions through dialogue and mutual respect. They prioritize the teachings of unity and compassion, understanding that discord among themselves weakens the impact of their shared message. A true apostle recognizes that their mission is to foster spiritual growth and positive transformation, both individually and collectively. Rather than arguing that someone is preaching the same gospel, a true apostle leads by example, demonstrating humility and a commitment to service. They recognize that the essence of their calling lies in building bridges, not walls, fostering an atmosphere where fellow apostles can flourish in their shared purpose. In this way, the unity among apostles becomes a powerful testament to the strength of their convictions and the transformative potential of the message. A genuine apostle, therefore, navigates the intricate tapestry of ministry with a heart inclined towards collaboration with another man preaching the same thing, understanding that the gospel is not a divisive tool but a unifying force. Instead of arguing about who stole whose gospel, a true apostle invests time in nurturing a spirit of love and mutual respect among the apostolic community. They prioritize the greater goal of advancing the kingdom of God over personal differences, recognizing that the impact of their collective efforts far surpasses any individual disagreements. By embodying humility and selflessness, a true apostle becomes a beacon of inspiration for others in the ministry. Their actions speak louder than words, inviting fellow believers to partake in a shared journey of faith that transcends denominational boundaries. This commitment to unity not only strengthens the bond among apostles but also reflects the timeless message of Christ, emphasizing love, compassion, and cooperation in spreading the gospel. A genuine apostle is a catalyst for transformative unity, understanding that the richness of their collective diversity contributes to the vibrant tapestry of the body of Christ. Through a commitment to service, 
humility, and collaboration, true apostles create a legacy that extends far beyond individual accomplishments, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of faith. Pastor Mathis cannot rightly dividing the word of truth. By saying Paul and Peter had two different gospel proofs that he's not an apostle. Rightly dividing the word of truth is crucial to ensure accurate interpretation of scripture. By doing so, preachers can avoid misinterpretations and misapplications of God's word. Examining teachings and comparing them with scripture is essential for maintaining doctrinal integrity within the congregation. This process safeguards against false teachings and ensures that what is preached aligns with the biblical foundation. Congregants, armed with discernment, can actively participate in spiritual growth and contribute to a community rooted in the truth of Scripture. Furthermore, the need for congregants to engage in this examination process stems from the potential impact of inaccurate teachings on faith and spiritual development. By encouraging individuals to scrutinize teachings in light of Scripture, a congregation fosters a community that prioritizes a solid, scriptural foundation. In a world with diverse interpretations and theological perspectives, congregational diligence in comparing teachings with scripture becomes a safeguard against doctrinal drift. It promotes unity in faith and prevents the adoption of teachings that deviate from the fundamental truths found in the Bible. This collective responsibility contributes to a resilient and spiritually sound community, grounded in a shared understanding of God's Word. The process of rightly dividing the word of truth and scrutinizing teachings against scripture is not merely an intellectual exercise but a spiritual necessity. It empowers believers to navigate the complexities of biblical interpretation, fostering a congregation that remains steadfast in its commitment to the authentic teachings of the Christian faith. The ongoing dispute with L.C. Mathis and him calling Gino Jennings' name over the so-called theft of the gospel reveals the potential pitfalls of seeking attention and personal recognition within the religious community. The accusation that Peter and Paul preach different Gospels underscores the importance of interpreting Scripture with precision, as misinterpretations can lead to unnecessary division. Genuine Apostles, as exemplified by the principles discussed, prioritize unity, humility, and collaboration over personal disputes. The pursuit of popularity for personal gain in religious contexts risks undermining the authenticity of the spiritual message and jeopardizing the credibility of the entire faith community. Instead of engaging in public conflicts, true apostles focus on fostering a spirit of love and mutual respect among fellow apostles, recognizing that the essence of their calling lies in building bridges, not walls. Ultimately, the commitment to unity, humility, and collaboration is not only a testament to the strength of their convictions but also a reflection of the timeless message of Christ. By embodying these qualities, genuine apostles become catalysts for transformative unity, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of faith and advancing the kingdom of God beyond individual disagreements. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I do pray that we all continue in striving to please God. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.